What's going on toy fan? Project Piper Customs here and we are back with another toy photography setup. Yes indeed and today we're going to be taking a look at the tangible light effect known as light painting. So we're going to be getting into how to make that magic and of course we won't be light painting without using too hot to handle, too cold to hold. They call the ghost buses and the I'm in control bitch. Yeah, these little bastards are not the friendliest of figures to try and pose, but in there lies the challenge, and ultimately the challenges make us better at display posing, so can't knock it. Anyway, let's get on with it. You can skip the intro now. Welcome back toy fam and as you can see this is the camera angle that I'm going for okay so I've got the setup there all right yeah you know, and yeah this is sort of the angle so low down looking up all right just basically using my frame that I have to work with um, the lighting and backdrop haven't been really set up yet I just needed to get them in position so as you can see here I've got the three Ghostbusters trying to recreate the uh, ballroom scene from the first movie. Okay, so I've got Ray setting up the trap, and I've got Egon and Peter, and I'm going to be using light painting with the fake electronic light show to create the uh, proton streams. And uh, let's have a, have a quick look up close. So as you can see, I've got a little green light there, which is shining just behind Slimer. You can't see it well enough with the main light on, but if I kill that it's gonna get a bit hazy so you can see it's slightly glowing here but it's really glowing on camera there you go so I've yet to sort out my lighting it's just giving you a quick look at the uh, beginnings of the setup all right all right so as you can see this is how as far as I've gotten so far but the uh, the remainder of the grind is I have some extra bits here to add such as there you go. Dining room tables. So I've got four of these. That I'm going to try and obviously place around or scattered and skew with. And so you got one, two, three, four of those. Of these. And we also have, as you can see here, some chairs. Okay, you can see we've got six of those, I think, or eight. I think eight. Uh, there are three. As you know, six, two per table. Two per table, so six of those there. And as you can see here, we have some uh, plates and we've got some silverware as well, just to scatter across the floor. So some gold and silverware, got a few of those. And lastly, if I can find them, do, 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 do. I've got everything going on in here. Ah, here we go some napkins all right so all these are dollhouse miniatures that i picked up off of ebay um yeah so uh, they're great for just um little background accessories you know they come up a bit small in scale but um you know if you're trying to create a scene and you need stuff to fill it out then these you know, well dollhouse accessories are really good because you know they're quite cheap and um you know with some forced perspective you can get anything to work so and they have miniatures of literally anything you could think of you know look at this miniature handkerchiefs right with <laughs> little neck braces around them there goes one i think yeah just drop there i'll show you quick okay excuse the nail that's where i've uh, shut it in the door um yeah so that's pretty awesome so we're going to be scattering all that stuff around the floor and just to fill out the area a bit and then i'll get to sort out my uh one that's once I'll, I'll do that once i've sorted out my backdrop and my lighting so with Slimer, just going over Slimer again, I have him pegged to my desk on a bit of a uh, grey cotton. All right, so it's been hooked over and I've wrapped it around Slimer's neck into a little uh, tie there. So it's very, very thin. And uh, hopefully, you know, we're going to make sure that that doesn't show up on camera. And yeah, so we're going to be using uh, light painting. All right, so we're going to be sitting with the camera and tracking the beams. So they all get captured. 
going around here and here. But this is going to take really, really, really long trying to line these beams up. So it looks like they're coming from the tips of the proton ones. You know, wrap around Slimer and then come down again. Um, yeah, so good thing I've got a full memory card for airspace space because I'm probably going to use all of it up. <laughs> it won't be empty by the time I'm done. Let me tell you that. All right, so let's get on with it. Okay, so as I've got you here watching the time lapse, I just want you to go over the details of the setup itself. Okay, as you can see here, I'm placing the dining room tables with the tablecloth in place, and I just want them scattered around to resemble them from the scene when they're just tossing the tables to one side to make room for laying the trap. And I'm going to have the, the chairs and the silverware and the plates all scattered around their feet as uh, just to resemble the mess that they've made. Okay, so there we are, just setting up the first table in front there, just getting some foreground um, depth going. So it's the overturn table there. Now, as you can look at Slimer, I've got Slimer hoisted up on a bit of cotton thread, some grey cotton thread for sewing. And that's just being clamped to the side of my desk, as you can see the clamp there next to my camera. And the cotton is wrapped over one of my overhead lamps. And Slimer there is now just dangling above the Ghostbusters. And of course he kept spinning during the shoot, which made uh, shooting uh, quite difficult, trying to get him in line and getting him in position. But that's part of the fun. But I've got him the cotton wrapped around his neck. And uh, yeah, it's just hidden as it's fallen in one of his neck seams. So, you know, it hid it quite well. And we'll make sure with the dramatic lighting that the cotton doesn't show up on camera too much. Okay, so as you can see, I'm setting the tables and chairs in place. Now the flooring, the base flooring, is from a apartment hallway dyer that I got from my friend Tom's Dioramas. Okay, I didn't want to go with uh, just a concrete base, even though the floor won't be in, you know, much detail where the floor won't be in the shot. I just preferred the hardwood floor sort of setting. Um, and also with the backdrop, as we wanted the main focus to be on the Ghostbusters and Slimer and the light painting, didn't really want to go too much details with the backdrop. So we're just using that giant slab, that grey uh, that grey slab that, we, uh, that you remember from the Kingpin and Spider-Man shot. So we just got that in the back there and it also makes a great surface for the light painting. So as you can see, I'm just scattering around the various crockery and cutlery and just getting it all nice and even in frame, but also looking messy at the same time because you only have your box frame you know, in your viewfinder to work with. So you want to make sure that essentials are visible and it makes it look like you know there's a good mess, but you know that things are visible in camera at the same time. Okay, so moving on to my lighting, and as you'll see that I'm setting up a green light to hit Slimer from behind, and that's what's really going to make him pop in his translucent body. And when you have anything translucent, like an effect piece or anything like that, hit it from behind or underneath to really make it stand out on camera. And as you can see, I've got the green light screened off, so it shields anything from the background being hit by the green light also, making sure that Slimer is the only thing being hit by the green light itself. For the other lights, just to the left, I have a light with a daylight lamp going on. So it's a yellow wash and it's filtered and that's just peeking in and just providing the wash just over the figures just very subtly and I have one overhead lamp just providing a little bit of a wash over Ray in the background obviously it's going to be very dark so we just wanted him highlighted and obviously we've got a green light hitting Slimer from behind which is making him pop with his translucent body and as you can see here we're having some practice runs with the light painting okay which we'll be getting into in the next segment okay and that's all about the camera settings and of course the timing because timing is essential with light painting and you'll find out what I mean by that in the next bit and that is how it all came together okay excuse my audio as my microphone has died but I just want to give you a look at the final setup so as you can see I've got the tables in place all the crockery cutlery and the napkins and the chairs all right so I've got a green light Getting Slimer from behind, being blocked out so it doesn't interfere with the, the rest of the setup. I literally just have one little light up there coming down onto Ray. I've got a light there, and I've got my light there. And that's just going to just filter in slightly. Uh, I've left it with the tissue paper background as it acts, it kind of looks like giant curtains with just a, a column in the middle. You know, just some sort of decorative ballroom. You know, not much needed. So, uh, but yeah. So this is how it looks through the viewfinder. Okay. And to give you a look at my camera settings. All right, so this is what I'm working with. If you want to screenshot this, you can do. And this, these settings will allow the shutter to stay open long enough so that it will capture the laser pen beams. All right. 
so we're going to change things up a little bit instead of trying to get this in one shot okay so trying to have the beam start from the tip come across hit slimer come back down and finish at the tip because obviously the beam is coming in at a different angle it's going to start you know completely off and just end up all over the place and i'll give you an example of what i mean all right so through the viewfinder all right so give you an example right, so here is the beam on the tip of peter's proton uh, wand all right so if i move it away now get look where the beam actually starts on the wall up here and if i sorry if i use a different angle all right see how low down it is yeah so trying to line this up from the very tip all the way across over to slimer right there and then come back down and hit egon pretty much almost impossible all right it's literally a one in a million chance so what we're going to do instead we're going to take five separate shots okay five separate shots and we're going to layer them together all right so it's kind of an uh, unorthodox method all right it's still tangible with the light but um yeah with a little bit of editing and it's all going to look like one shot okay so nothing's going to move the camera isn't going to move so everything will remain still and the only thing that will be different for each shot is the proton streams okay so we're going to do one shot with the beam on the end of uh, peter's wand just uh bear with me yeah there glowing away in the second shot we're going to do the same on the end of egon's tip just glowing okay and then we're going to do one on slimer okay so the proton stream is going to be hitting slimer all over all right like that and then we're going to do a full shot of the beam from behind and we're going to draw all right so we're going to start here and we're going to draw all the way up to slimer and then we're going to do the same with egon from behind and we're just going to draw a proton stream leading all the way to slimer as well well then we're going to layer the five okay so then it will all look one neat shot Okay, like I said, a bit unconventional way of doing things, but, you know, sometimes you have to mix it up uh, when physics is not on your side. But the light work will still be tangible, and which is the aim of the whole, the whole setup, really. Okay, so let's get to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate just how the, uh, the beam is captured, okay, using the camera settings. So when we hit the shutter, You'll see the delay in the uh, the shutter speed. It'll stay open for a few seconds, drinking all that light as you're moving it across the screen, okay? And then it will capture it all. But that that then you will see just how random it is and how difficult it will be just to get everything lined up. But I'll give you a demonstration. So three, two, one. Yeah, see what I mean. So I'll show you one more time. Get back on. So <laughs> poor Ray getting hit in the face. But you can see what I mean. Trying to get everything lined up um, from Peter's wand all the way up to Slimer and then back down perfectly is pretty much a one in a million chance. Or you'll be at this all day okay kind of had a little bit of a breakthrough okay i found some point of references now as i was saying before if i have the laser aiming straight at Wenkman's tip all right the beam is going to start from there obviously because hitting the back wall it's not just going to capture it in midair these are laser pointers you know with regular lights they can get caught in midair with this technique but with laser pointers because they're so fast they automatically hit in the back wall okay so the beam can be traced but it'd be traced along whatever surface is hitting so of course what we're going to do is we're going to find a point of reference on that back wall all right so obviously as i said before when the beam is actually on the tip 
of his, uh, as you can see there, right? It's actually hitting the bottom. No matter which way you angle it, even from this side, you know, just, yeah, it's very, you can get it close, but it's not going to look right. So what we're going to do, all right, we're going to, we're still going to layer it, but only just by a couple, not nearly as many as before. So we're actually going to get this in one hit. All right. So we are going to aim the laser about there. So the illusion is still on the tip of his, uh, on his wand, but the beam is actually here. All right. Okay. So we're going to draw all the way around and then come back down to here. And we know that that reference point is just under this line. All right. Just under his line is there. And then we know when Slimer being about here, that we have to go above this line. All right. So we know then to faff around above here, come back down. So we're going to start here. As this fits on the, the black part, it's very hard to get a point of reference. So we're going to start the beam with Venkman about there. And then we're going to draw all the way around to there. Okay. But well, we're going to try to anyway. This still could take quite a few times, but hey, let's give it a go, right? Right. See if I can actually get this quick enough. Missed it miles away, but this is where the fun is. All right, so close. It's kind of pretty much got it, apart from, obviously, just there, where the beam breaks, because obviously it's hit the wall. And you can see that so that wall sticks out. So obviously it's breaking here. So there is where it's broken up, uh, as you can see. Yeah. So, so it's straight. Oh, just missed Venkman's one. We're getting closer. But yeah, a few more attempts at this and we'll get it. How? We'll cross the street. And there it is. Pretty happy with how this one turned out. All the pictures seem to blend together quite nicely. And the app I used to do that with was PixArt. A really awesome and easy to use app if you've not used it before. It's available on Android and on iOS. And simply, yeah, just drop the picture into the app, the one you want to start with first. And then scroll along to add image. And then select the next image wherever you have them stored. And it will drop it straight in and you can manipulate it. And then once you've got it all lined up, you can simply just erase away the parts that you don't want from the, uh, the, the second picture and to reveal what you had underneath. And you continue this process with all the other layers until you have your final shot that you want. It's pretty simple to do and it came out great. So yeah, anyway, that will do it for now guys. Thanks very much again for watching. If you enjoyed this, then please hit the hat trick of like, subscribe and notification bell. Any questions at all that you have, simply drop them in the comments and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Follow me on my socials of Instagram and Facebook at Project Piper Customs. Swing by Toy Comics Inc. Give them a shout and check out some more awesome examples of toy photography. And if you want to know more tips and tricks of the craft, then definitely head on over to the Plastic Action UK webpage. You'll find the list down there in the menu. And also check out the Plastic Action UK YouTube channel, where we have more figure shooting from Carl, where he takes you behind the scenes of his latest toy shots. And we also have just started a new series with Tom of Tom's Dioramas, where he breaks down his latest Dio builds. And also check out the Plastic Action UK podcast where we break down all aspects of toy photography episode by episode and share our knowledge of each one. And that will do it from me. I'm about to have a cup of tea. And take care everyone. Thanks again for watching. And until next time.